Welcome back. Former federal prosecutors described the decision to charge former President Trump in Miami as strategic. The New York Times is highlighting how moving the case to Trump's home state of Florida, which is become a red state in recent cycles, lessens the likelihood that Trump will claim he can't get a fair trial due to political bias. The newspaper points out that the jury pool in Miami and around nearby Mar-a-Lago, that's in Palm Beach, is likely more diverse in political ideologies than a pool that would come from Washington, D.C. And a dispute over venue would have likely triggered a protracted legal battle, so DOJ is hoping to avoid that. Joining us now, someone very familiar with the jury pools of South Florida, state attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Ehrenberg. Dave, great to see you. We're going to talk about venue in a second. But first, let's just talk about the, the charges themselves, your, your take, and explain to the viewer, is it matter or not if Trump, we know he has, he's being charged with having this classified material, does it matter or not if he showed it to anybody? Good morning, Jonathan. Well, the dissemination of classified material would come under the Espionage Act, and he's going to be charged under the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793E, and that can get you up to 10 years in prison. And there's two parts to it, disseminating it, showing it to people, or just not returning it upon request. And hes that's an important charge here. But the most serious charge is the obstruction. That'll get you up to 20 years in prison. And then there's a conspiracy count apparently involved here. And Jonathan, that to me is the biggest question. Conspiracy means there's an agreement between two or more people to commit a crime. Well, who's the other person or other persons involved? Because it could be, is it Mark Meadows? Is it Walt Nada, the valet? who, according to reports, was told to move the documents before the feds got there. So we're still going to see a lot more coming, especially if it's a speaking indictment by the feds, which will set out the facts of what happened. And we should learn all of that on Tuesday, of course, in Miami. So let's talk about Florida and this idea of venue change. You know, up until this point, up until about a week ago, we were all so solely focused on Washington, D.C. when it came to a grand jury, when it came to DOJ's uh, probe there uh, about the former president, January 6th, yes, but also the classified documents part. And then suddenly we learn of this Miami grand jury, and that is where chargers are brought. So talk to us about that decision and what you make of what that venue could mean going forward. Yeah, well, the DOJ can keep a secret, Jonathan. None of us knew about this grand jury. They certainly didn't tell us state prosecutors about it. And they did this in secret, and here we are. Now, prosecutors clearly would rather have this case in Washington, D.C., rather than down here in South Florida. You know, Washington, D.C., they voted 90 or 92% for Joe Biden to 5% for, for Donald Trump in 2020. In Palm Beach County, they voted 43%. Um, for uh, Donald Trump. And in Miami-Dade County, they voted 46% for Donald Trump. So you can see why the jury pool is better for prosecutors in D.C. But there are two reasons why this case is in the Southern District of Florida. First, prosecutors have to bring charges against defendants in the jurisdiction where the crime took place. It looks like the obstruction clearly took place at Mar-a-Lago in the Southern District of Florida, as well as the espionage. And filing in South Florida eliminates Trump's inevitable venue challenges in court, as you pointed out. That could have undone the case before it ever got started. At the very least, it would have delayed the case. And also, there's a second reason, Jonathan. I think it's because Jack Smith wanted the public to buy into this. He's a career prosecutor appointed by an apolitical former judge who's now the attorney general. And I'm sure he bristles at accusations that this is a political witch hunt. And to show this is not political, he wanted to go into a red state, Donald Trump's home state, and get an indictment. It's a bit of a gangster move, uh, and it's going to be harder to get a conviction, but not impossible. So, Dave, let's talk briefly about Trump's possible defenses. Uh, he's been floating of various explanations uh, on Truth Social over the months. Uh, but when they're in that courtroom, what do you think his teams will say, and how effective might they be? I think he's going to lean into the fact that as president, he has wide latitude to declassify documents. And that's why prosecutors seem to work really hard to debunk that declassification defense. And if it's true, they have this recording of Donald Trump on tape, admitting that he knows about the declassification rules and and uh, that this is not just some Jedi mind trick that he created where he can just declassify things in his mind or has a standing order to declassify things, then that's going to hurt Donald Trump. And I think that's what prosecutors are waiting on. That was the final piece of the puzzle. And then there's also the chance that Donald Trump could count on what's called jury nullification, hoping you get a couple of Trump supporters on the jury who just won't want to send their guy 
into the Hooskow. And, you know, if you think about it, if he's being tried in Miami-Dade County, where 46 percent of the voters went for Trump, that's 5.5 out of 12 jurors on the panel that are Trump voters. So Trump is probably thinking he likes his odds there. The right man to talk about legal proceedings in South Florida. State attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Ehrenberg, thank you so much for joining us today.